Yo guys, in this video I'm just going to do a small analysis of Alfred Hitchcock Vesco, especially since I've just finished the game. Uh, with that being said, I hope you guys are having happy holidays, a good Christmas, and a happy new year. Um, I have a Santa hat because it, today is Christmas. I thought I had some time to try and film this video. I thought it was an interesting game. I brought the game solely that based on the fact that it was a story based game. You get a few, you get a few of those like every now and then. Um, and I thought it would be an interesting one to get, especially close to release day. With that being said, I'll get, I'll gloss over a few, um, a few of the negatives first. I think technically, I mean, there's some few technical issues I had with the game. One of them was the lip movement and the speech. I mean, I thought it wasn't synced together quite a few times. Uh, as in, you thought the character was saying something, but no, no, um, no sound is coming out. And I thought that was a bit weird, and it took you out of the game a few times. There's another issue, it only happened once, but it kind of took you out of the game as well. But it's during one of the interesting developments when you learn that Lisa Horowitz doesn't exist any longer because Veronica got Lisa to kill herself. Not to kill herself, but she literally pushed her off the edge. But during that development, the sound is quite loud, and I you couldn't do anything to control it. It's almost like the volume of the dialogue. So especially during, I don't know if the game will be patched in the near future. So if you if you're someone who's quite particular on that, um, that might cause an issue for you. But with that being said, um, I thought the game was interesting. I thought the story I'll give the story overall like a seven out of ten. And um, I do want to say there are a few issues I had with the story. The first thing, Faye being killed by the cat, as funny as that was, might be I felt it might be a cop out by the developers. I mean, we don't know Faye's intentions with Ed. We learned that. Ed had a relationship with Roberts, Faye's father, but we don't really know why she still has a grudge with him in the modern day, like years later. Um, Ed was taking attention away from the father, but I mean, years later, even for Faye, he was insane. It seems insane that she still has a grudge against him all these years later. Well, my theory is that she, he's literally the only, only um, target in her sights, and that's why she, talks, why she had her sights in Ed. And then he kind of learned that she Pepsi damaged her ankle and then went to Ed's house so he, she could get inside Ed's house and gain the sympathy, so to say. She then takes pictures of Ed's house. Uh, she has a grudge against the cat, which is quite funny. Um, she eventually sleeps with Ed. And one of the moments, uh, by the way, um, if you're watching this video, I hope you're watching this after you watch or you've played the game because everything about this is spoilers. <laughs> So she sleeps with ads and then you can look over to ads and you can see a few options you can choose. So one is like climax and I kind of forgot what the other one was, but in one, when you click on climax, she mentions she, she planned, she took plan B and we assume that that dialogue was towards ad. So we're not exactly sure if she did take plan B or not. Eventually if comes back with a baby and then we realize that she didn't take plan B. But with that being said, especially in the later part of the story where you learn about Faye's true intentions, she didn't really have any connection with the baby at all. In fact, she told the baby to shut up multiple times. And I was so confused about that part. Maybe um, it's just me um, just overlooking things, me being stupid. Or um, I don't know, because when she mentioned she took plan, plan B and all those options you can click on before, I thought that was true. So it's assumed that the baby is Ed's, and I. It took me quite a while to realize that. I thought it was like a baby she took from somewhere. Like it could be a relative, or knowing Faye, she did something else. Um, so I think I might have looked a bit too much into the story. And um, another thing I wanted to touch upon, and I, I was reading online on the Steam discussion. Someone mentioned this with with it being their own theory as well. For one, at one point, I thought Faye could have been Jenny, as in uh, Ed's half sister. I know that was quite a stretch, especially as any theory goes, but considering that Reyes was one, I think Reyes was one of the first people on, onto the crash, um, he must have realized Ed's dad must, was involved in the whole thing, but obviously he killed himself before he could do anything. I thought Reyes could have hid Jenny, just to keep her safe. I, I know the theory is a bit of a stretch, but I felt like the most interesting theory out of all of them, because you don't really know what phase grudge so to say is against Ed because she tries to if you look at the game she tries to ruin his life so I thought it was a bit strange that she was still targeting him um it's quite interesting how she like re his trauma 
by literally getting him to relive the car crash, uh, trying to uh, relive his trauma with his dad, jumping off the bridge, which is psychotic uh, to think about. And speaking of the bridge, I thought she could have like roped down or abseiled down from the top of the bridge. Instead, she did this really weird thing, almost impossible, where she climbed the whole bridge by hand and got to the top, um, which is super weird in my opinion. <laughs> I knew going into the game it wasn't going to be a very fast-paced game. Um, the therapist comes in, Ed's involved in the car crash, um, he's reliving his trauma, and he's suddenly got vertigo. Um, the therapist tries to take him out of that by trying to relive his trauma. We learn that he has repressed memories and he had quite a traumatic childhood. The dad being an al alcoholic, failed writer. We learn more about the mother, how she tried to be a good mother for Ed, but she still had an affair with Reyes and that kind of split the family apart. That Those issues kind of, I, I think, fed into Ed's dad's alco um, alcoholic tendencies. Uh, why he eventually pushed the car with Ed and Jenny in it, which was one of the most shocking moments of the game. So yeah, that was pretty interesting. It was also interesting about Reyes' character development. Um, he obviously... is It was kind of like Severus Snape's story in Harry Potter. He he likes Ed's mother as a child. They kind of like grew apart. And then they reconnected and they had Jenny. So that was interesting as well. A few other characters that were like on the part of the story, but not like heavily involved with Adam and Ed's Aunt Claire. Um, it was kind of funny with Ed's Aunt Claire, like she, you'd ask her anything and she'd go on a tangent and not directly answer you. I think in the game I said she'd make a good spy because she wouldn't answer any question directly. But we eventually learned that she was in denial. She was, she's Ed's aunt's um, on her dad's side, so Ed's dad's sister. And she's in denial about the whole thing. Um, Ed was an orphan at a younger age. Um, she has to protect him, and Ed. You can accuse her of brainwashing Ed, which might come off a bit strong, strong, but you kind of pull this confession out of her that she did it to try and protect Ed. He was involved in horrible circumstances outside of his control, and he has horrible things happen to him, losing losing his family. So, so you can sympathize with her and empathize with her doing the best she can to try and give Ed the best life she can, given given what he's been through. And I thought that was an interesting development as well. 